A High-Pitched Cry for Help by Problematic Underslash Lana on AO3. Chapter 13. Just a Haircut. The next few days were rough. Izuku's health was still fragile, and putting more stress on top of it was not exactly recommended. The next day, he woke up with a fever, and when they called in to inform the doctor that saw him, they were informed of his blood test results. Maybe the path to recovery was slightly longer than they thought. As suspected, Isiku had a lung infection, and although it was something to not take lightly, it was treatable with some antibiotics. Antibiotics that were making things a bit harder. His stomach was delicate enough, and with the antibiotics, he could barely eat anything. After an inspection, it seemed like the apartment Izuku was living in had some nasty fungus, and using that as evidence, the detective added child endangerment to the charges his parents would face. He couldn't just add child abuse, as Izuku wouldn't give a statement. On top of being bedridden, the poor kid was really anxious. He seemed a lot more comfortable around Aizawa, but there was a little bit of panic in his eyes every time Mike raised his voice to anything higher than a whisper. So, for now, the blonde had to limit himself to whispering and sign language, as frustrating as it was. The first three days on the new medication, he would puke almost everything he ate, and his fever was going down so slowly that they were taking his temperature almost every hour. They decided to bring Recovery Girl for a second opinion on day two, but she also said that as long as his temperature didn't go up, the kid would be okay. Recovery Girl gave them the number of a nurse she knew whose quirk was quirk perception. That would let them know without a thousand tests what Izuku's quirk was and how it worked. She also congratulated them on the kid. None of them had the heart to say it was a temporary fostering situation. On day four, though, the kid looked better. His fever went down a lot, and he was able to eat half a plate of rice and soup. His mind also seemed to be less foggy, and he even had the energy to ask for the hero notebooks. At day five, the couple thought it was time to bring his cats back. They had two fluff balls, who were staying at Namuri's under the excuse of the house is being fumated. It was also a good time to talk to Namuri and ask for that haircut too. At this exact moment, Hisashi was outside the apartment trying to calm Namuri on the phone. If she was any louder, his hearing aids would just explode. What do you mean you suddenly have a kid? She yelled again, as if, he didn't just explain the situation three times. Why am I just finding out? He parted the phone from his ear a little and let out an awkward laugh. It was, well, um, unexpected? And well, of course, it was called an emergency foster license for a reason, after all. You can meet him now, but we have to keep things calm if we w- As if I'm asking for permission, I'll be there in ten minutes. And the line went dead. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Before anything, he would have to make sure Shota waited for her. She would listen to his grumpy ass. They really loved Namuri, but she could be a lot to handle. And there was no way in hell they would let her come in screaming and wanting to hug a kid that needed help to get up to go to the bathroom. If Mike already had a hard time keeping his voice low... He couldn't imagine how bad things could go if anything went wrong. They can't afford the kid having another meltdown now that he is finally getting better. As expected, she was there as fast as her crappy car allowed her to be, and the cats were in their kennel and looked as amused as Namuri. Shota was waiting for her, letting the cats in before explaining in detail the situation of the kid. He made sure to answer every question so she wouldn't ask him. He went step by step, saying what was acceptable and what was not, and warning her to not take it personally if Izuku didn't like her, especially if they asked her to leave before things escalated. They really wanted her to meet him, but they had to put him first. After a conversation that was way too long for her liking, she was allowed in. She went to the door the couple indicated and let a big breath out, obviously excited about the news, and meeting the little human. She knocked twice and went in, fully aware of the fact that the kid wasn't going to answer. Inside, Izuku was covered in a thick quilt that didn't even let his eyes out. 
He was completely under the covers. And the big lump in the bed was just the funniest way the hero could think of meeting her friend's kid. She stayed there, close to the door, waiting for a signal to come in or go away. She told herself she would accept whatever, but she really wanted the kid to like her. After a minute or two, two bright green eyes popped out, curiosity getting the best of him. She understood, then, what made Shota soft enough to let a kid into his own home. Oh, lords, aren't you the cutest thing on earth? She had to hold an excited squeal before it could stare him off. Your eyes are really pretty. Izuku didn't respond. He just felt his cheeks hot all of a sudden, but did not try hiding again either. I'm Mike and Shota's friend. Do you mind if I come in? Izuku looked at her and then behind her, where Shota was standing. After a half smile from him, he nodded and came out of the covers. At first glance, Izuku didn't look too amused at the sight of another person. Mind you, he was asleep when Recovery Girl came in. But with a little distraction and baby talk, he was won over. He really didn't say much, as Namuri was not really familiar with sign language, so the whole time it was more about her talking and coloring some pictures of a color book she somehow brought with her. Izuku loved her stories about being a hero. She was even kind enough to not let any sexual or inappropriate jokes slide in. Surprisingly enough, the X-rated hero turned out to be great with kids. Izuku's eyes said it all. He was enchanted by her. Her nursery rhymes and her soft laugh made her the perfect nanny for the future. At some point in the afternoon, Izuku tried getting the courage to ask for that haircut again. But before he could express it, Aizawa asked Midnight if she was willing to do it. Mike, who was settling the cats in their master room until the kid's lung situation was resolved, started to get things ready for the haircut. Wondering if it would be taking it too far by taking one strand of hair to Mark as his first haircut. Are you sure you're happy with cutting your hair? Shota asked again. He knew how some people were attached to it. We can stop any time. Just tap my hand twice and we'll stop, okay? He nodded, and in that moment, Everyone in the room had the feeling that, for the kid, this was more than just a haircut. They settled the station at his room. He was doing better, and there was no intention of him getting hurt by moving too much. A towel around his shoulders, some scissors, water in a spray bottle, some cream for his curls, and a brand new detangler they got for this occasion. Midnight was just as excited to be part of this core memory as the kid was about it all. I'll be gentle so you won't even notice. She said, starting with the water and detangling cream, softly humming a melody that made Izuku's nerves melt away. Aizawa was impressed by the confidence she had while doing her hair. Her hair was straight, after all, but her hands showed experience. Izuku was incredibly calm during the whole process, even letting the tiniest smiles show. Aizawa was the only one that made the connection about his hair. Even though it was far-fetched, he knew the kid was used to his mother being the only one touching it, and the fact that the Murray was doing it so easily told a story of the kid being more used to feeling safe in feminine company. It made him a little jealous. He would never admit it, but he held on to the memory of the kid hugging him first, of him allowing a soft head pat. That was enough for now. Healing is a process, he reminded himself. The nursery songs were sung, shared by Murray and Mike's voice, both making a silent agreement to keep it soft and calm, no lyrics involved. At that second, his heart ached in a familiar way. The sight of the kid surrounded by his husband and closest friend, it just felt right. He found himself not thinking of the kid as something temporary. He found himself just wishing to keep things like this a little bit longer an eternity longer, if possible. I just noticed that yesterday's video on the outro, it didn't have music. My bad. My bad. I forgot to add the music. That's on me, guys. That's on me. That's on me. But I want to talk about this chapter. Um, obviously, obviously, Izuku's okay with Anna Murray touching his hair because, you know, feminine. But I also think Izuku's haircut is not just a haircut. I, I agree with Aizawa. A lot of people think that hair holds memory, right? Um, and 
even in, in different cultures, like I know native culture, hair is a symbol of power. Like the longer your hair, the more power you have. Like your hair is your power, which is why when people die or when you're grieving, you cut your hair short, right? It is, it's a symbol. And in a lot of different cultures, hair is symbols, right? I know specifically in Japan, they really do think that hair holds memory. So when someone dies, instead of cutting it, they let it grow, right? And they don't cut it, right? Um, which is completely different to <laughs> indigenous culture, which is if somebody dies and they're close to you, like mourning, like you're, somebody close to you dies, you cut your hair and it's your time of mourning, right? It's your sign of mourning, your, your, your way of healing, your way of coping. Um, well, in, in Japan, it's, it's, it's different or whatever, right? So in this sense, if hair holds memory, right? And, you know, you, what's it called? Isuku obviously is probably mourning his mother and his father. Because even though they're not dead, they're not his parents. Or, they are his parents, but they, they're not his mom or his dad. Isuku recognizes this. Like, they're, they're not, they don't care about him right and it's a different type of mourning because they're still alive you're mourning the relationship the the bond the familiarship familiarship um that you've had with them not them but you are also mourning them because they're no longer in your life either right but they're still alive you know it's it's it's, it's a weird type of mourning when you mourn someone who is still alive and who is still there they're just not in your life they're alive but you just don't get to see that. You're not with them. Or maybe you do get to see that, but you're not in their life. You don't get to know what they're doing or anything like that. And in Izuku's case, this is this is his mom and dad he's talking about. He had a deep connection with them. Like, that is his parents. And to find out that, you know, obviously these strangers care for him more than his parents ever did, it hurts. It's gonna hurt for him. And um, to cut it, it's, it's a way to release that energy that that you know it's it's a way to just let go and I really do like that symbol I I always love symbols when it comes to hair like for example Hisashi and Aizawa having long hair for the simple fact that they probably haven't cut it since Oboro it makes sense that they haven't cut it since Oboro um well then again Aizawa did have it quite long in his teen years but considering that, you know, in your teen years, you could have it longer. I feel like he chose to have it at that bob length. Same with present Mike. I feel like they chose to, you know, grow it longer um, as a way to, you know, remember Oboro. Hair holds memory. Um, and obviously they're going to go more with um, the whole Japanese culture than indigenous culture because that, you know, but... Yeah, I just wanted to go on that little rant about there. So yeah, as always, my rain drops. So make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.